Good morning folks. I'm here with tired eyes, a little bit of sleep in them after the Prosecco, but feeling ready to crack on with fitting these cones up and getting them tacked and ready. The keen eyed of you may have noticed yesterday that I sort of rolled these inside out. That should have been on the inside the coating. So these three, it's fine, I can still use them polished up the other way. Just means I might have to get a buffer wheel on the inside because that's just descaled stainless and not polished. Although, having said that, I did notice that the dull polished finish on the inside of these tanks does feel like it's brushed and not polished. So I have picked up some polishing discs and some compound from tool station when I went with the kids last week and I'm going to give them all, all the tanks, uh, a quick once over with the polishing and uh, everything else to see if we can't get them absolutely sparkly bright. Never done that before either but basically what I'm looking for is a smooth uniform finish and I think they're going to want dressing on the inside anyway after I've completed the welding. So some of the fitting on these cones is not as neat as I would like it to be. So what I'm going to do, if they're not perfect and there are large gaps, I'm going to take them apart and grind the edges again to get them looking a bit neater. But if I can get away and fill the gap, I will. So let's get a fold on. Let's get a fold on. Second one on the table this morning give you an idea of what's going on. The fit is pretty good, but it's difficult to wrestle them round. So the gap is wider at the top than it is at the bottom. So I'm using the weld to pull it in. So when I put a tack there, for instance, when that cools, it's going to contract and pull the metal in. And as I work my way up, it's like zipping up a boot lace. And when I get to the top, or when the top closes, should I say, then I'll switch and I'll go and put one at the top so it doesn't over, over pinch. And then one in the middle and then dink, dink, until we've got tacks pretty much like that every inch. And then I'll do another one. And then when I come to weld the seams up, I'll put the backing bar on and we'll back purge. Clean them up first, of course, and then we'll back purge and see if we can't get a nice hygienic weld on there. I think, uh, I think I'm gonna be able to do it. I've been dipping the rod as well, getting the hang of that. That's tricky. So all the cones now are tacked up into roughly a conical shape. And because I didn't back purge during the tacks, I'm gonna go in there now and clean the tacks up on both sides, being careful not to remove the tack itself so that they hold together and then I'm going to attach the purge bar to the one side of it and weld up the other and then swap round, go and uh, reflow the inside of the weld and have the purge bar on the outside and then once I've done all of that I will try and form them into a nice round cone because there's no point me beating them around now and then putting a load of heat into the steel and it distorting on me so I'll do that after the event. This one was really, really, really tricky. It's gonna to have to be a grinder job. Grinder, buffing wheel, buffing paste, because I just cannot, cannot get it right. But this was one of the worst ones which I started with. So 
battery died. Yeah, so as I was saying, those welds are extremely tricky to get right, so <sighs> grinder, polishing wheel to sort out the ones that I've already done, and hopefully I'll improve as we uh, as we move forward onto the other cones. God knows what it's going to be like welding the cones onto the cylinders because I'll be inside a tank. Uh, but time will tell. It is now three o'clock, believe it or not. I looked down, lost track of time. I've got to get the kids. Well, I'm sure the kids are really excited. I brought them to work with me. Let's get these guys set up upstairs and uh, then I can come back down. Have they seen the office before? Yeah, everyone's seen the office. Then I can come back down and finish off these cones. It's beginning to get dark outside. It's gone five o'clock. This is the second cone, the second flat cone, and actually I've picked up the pace. There has been one blowout, one hole, I'll show you. So we had one hole there, I'm not going to touch it, it's still hot, and all the rest of that seam run pretty nicely. And I also got a grinding wheel out on this one and a flapper disc and that's what we've come up with so it's not perfect but I've got a polishing wheel and whatnot and I think we can sort that out if I flip it over you can see she's not too shabby I mean I wouldn't want to sell it but uh, it's functional you know propping on this aluminium bar you know you're doing it it's drawing all of the heat out of the weld and obviously keeping the back sort of coke free but wow she gets a hot so after hitting it with a grinder I run over the weld with this Norton clipper flapper wheel which is an 80 grit it really seems to shine up the stainless quite quite considerably. Probably a little bit coarse. I'd like to have some 120 or 240 flapper discs, but can't find any at tool station, so I'm gonna have to look elsewhere. Getting these cones looking something like, particularly on the inside, was a much tougher job than I thought because the first couple that I cut out with the plasma torch had quite a jagged edge until I got the plasma torch settings perfect. So that meant that the fit up for the weld wasn't actually as neat as it was for the cylinders. The cylinders of course just having uh, guillotined edges from the, uh, the steel mill I'm sure. So I've really struggled filling holes, blowing holes through as I'm going and then uh, I tried backing with the aluminium to save on argon because I'm blasting through the argon with that back purge. In fact, I've nearly used half of that other bottle in just one day. But I've been sort of eight hours solid uh, on the welding table, pretty much, bar grinding. And I've only managed to get two of those five cones fully welded up, uh, although the others are tacked and ready to go. So it's difficult, and I'm really concerned now when I go to put, to, put together the cones on top of the cylinders that I'm going to have an outside corner joint, I think, to uh, to weld up. And if you can imagine the bottom of the tank on the inside, I'm sort of welding this section here, you know. And how do I stop the inside there coking up? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. So these are all questions that I'm going to just answer on the job as we go. Scrambler from Roosters, which is a watermelon pale at 4%. Never had that before. So I think we'll give this a whirl. Huh. It does have watermelon flavor, but I would just say that it's a very weak hop flavor. If you had something such as the Club Tropicana and watered it down, twice, diluted it by two times its its volume, you'd get this kind of flavour. Nice though, it's nice though. Right, I think uh, we've got to cook some tea. Today's filler for the vlog is going to mainly consist of us watching Gemma cut potatoes. Potatoes! 
Oh. Cut those potatoes, Gem, like you mean it. Oh. Stop wiping your hands on your butt. <laughs> oh, wow, look at this. Oh my god, really? Yeah, it's This like... is not great filler. Oh, it's like Nigella Lawson, isn't it? Hey. Oh. More like two fat ladies. Oh, just one fat lady. <laughs> Oh, I'm just going to slice this potato into thin strips for a change because I normally like them really thick, really thick and <laughs> and hard, but we're going to cut these thin and fry them up nice and soft today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to take the knife and I'm going to... I'm using the wrong knife. I'm going to stick it right in there. Oh my god, the finger's gonna go now. <laughs> this is the wrong now. It's too big. Oh, it's too big. <laughs> hey, Nigella's at it again. 